Hello all you souls and tails out there, it's Soul Tales here, and welcome to episode number 6 of my Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 Let's Play series. Now at night, and with improved mic quality, I hope, because if not, well then this would be very awkward. But regardless, look at that tree. Oh well, let us continue on with the dick side case as we... Sneaked through that guard in the most... How should I say this? Perfect disguise. You would never guess that I'm not British. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. That is oddly specific of you. But thank you. Ah, the fireflies. I assume you are Mr. Swift, I hope. Do you have any relationship to Taylor Swift? I think not, but who knows? Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have the spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Well, let's not say how you meet Mr. Gildon, because that defeats the purpose of a disguise. I am ready to work, sir. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? Hmm. Uno. That's definitely what you're working on. Would be weird. An archaeological treasure, I hope. Archaeological treasure. Ah, uh, you're hoping to find something priceless, something that will change our history. Bravo, young man. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's true. We're looking for Vitus Lemonius's tomb. I'll help you. That is my goal as a worker. Good. Listen to me carefully, then. I hate repeating myself. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything. Always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one, and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. Let's observe. Well, he likes wearing glasses. Inconvenient, but continues to wear broken glasses. Meticulous, a thick notebook. Hmm. No ring, unmarried. Indifferent, oh poor. Dirty clothes. Well, it makes sense for his dirt. Well, that guy can't speak. It would make sense for his clothes are dirty. Being his profession, unless he's did something we don't know about. Elbow bruises, fresh and untended. Arthur Swift is an archaeologist attempting to find the tomb of Vitus Lemonius on Codona. He uses all of his resources to locate his ancient... I mean, this ancient site would be weird if it was his ancient site and he was still alive. Driven by an obsession to expand the knowledge of humankind. He does not care about his appearance, no occasional wounds incurred during research such as the injured elbow on his left arm. His life is documented in meticulous detail in a diary he treasures. Arthur Swift has sacrificed almost everything he has in a thankless attempt to uncover more about the past. I think it's this one, because he seems to be a jolly old chap. Eh, can I take care of so that I... I don't think it's this. I wish I could be as passionate about something as you are, Mr. Swift. You value knowledge and dedication over everything else. 
It's a long road, young man. A sharp eye and attention to detail are the only stepping stones along this path. You have to sacrifice everything you love for the larger prize. Exactly. So much in life is uh, superficial. I wish more people would understand. I never heard a truer word, lad. Folk will ignore what truly matters in life, and for what? Convenience. Bold words indeed. I doubt that many scientists would be willing to support their bragging with fieldwork. The academic world is full of restrictions. Our honorable professors are too afraid to dirty their hands. God forbid if they have a stain on their shirt. You can follow in my footsteps. You can start learning by returning to work. Show me what you can find. And I will show you the world. Yeah. The Titus and Vetus a conquest. Titus and Vetus the Lemonites were legendary legates of the early Roman Empire, starting their military career to suppress the rights of the Bellovaci and the Allobroges. They were the key commanders during the Siege of Mutina and the Battle of Actium. With the new Emperor Augustus, the brothers received a twin sword, presumably the ones previously belonging to Romulus and Remus. The brothers served as legates to conquer the Dalmatian and African provinces, and were famous for their worship of minor gods. Titus honored Eurus, while his brother prayed to Zephyrus. Not much is known about the brothers except for the description by Pliny the Elder. Titus wore the skin of a lion and his head on the helmet. A tradition he picked up while being a signifer. Vetus held a shield large enough to cover the sky. Must have had a lot of strength invested in that skill. Though the exact location of the tombs remain unknown. Historians know that Titus died in the spring of 10 AD, while Vitus in the autumn of 12 AD. So he has bragging rights. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make tent sails and more. Hmm. Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. Don't we all, John? Don't we all? Hmm, this map looks familiar. A plan for this whole operation. Titus Limonis tomb has been found near the city of Kurnith, British archaeologist Sir George Griffiths has discovered the well-preserved tomb of the Roman legate General Edie, Titus Limonius, owner of the legendary twin sword of Romulus gifted by Augustus himself, first emperor of the Roman Empire Edie, if you don't know. Okay. In an exclusive interview, Sir George has described the find as a priceless addition to the history of humankind. The entrance was found by the removal of several blocks of soil around the prominent statues, revealing the tomb. According to Sir George, the statues represent the life of Titus. A female statue, presumably a mother, holding a basket of fruits, looks to the west. Another female figure, perhaps Autumn, with the sickle in her hand, looks to the east. So Judge presumes that these statues are hidden allegories of Zephyrus, a minor god of the west wind, Edie, and the other, Yours, god of the east wind. All this being played in a circle with the statues of the two brothers, Titus and Vetus. The achievements of the archaeologists have been acknowledged by the crown. This might prove useful. 
I'll note it down. Shouldn't they be on this trick site though? Oh well. This reminds me of my father's room. Oh, did he too have giant 12 foot statues? No, no, maybe. A skull, nice. And the last Pazookology book. Sharpest pickaxe, even though he's using a machine gun. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> the guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. You, what was so important about these books? Or did you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey, a langa, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. Well, that was a waste of time. But I did like how when John started talking about his sacrificial right, the music got tense and dark. Okay, now that's just beautiful right there. That is just beautiful. Oh well, let us investigate more about the dick side over here. Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened to the statue. He did, did he? Well, let Swift us listen in on this uh, conversation. Which statue was damaged? Broken pickaxe? No. Forgotten instruments? No. Kick statue? Yes. Stash of old newspapers? No. Hardworking digger? Doesn't sound right. Tilted pedestal? No, not a pay raise. Lion helmet? Yes. Closest to the beach? Seems like it would be it. Arthur Swift Research. Workers at the dig site found a statue with a lion helmet ahead. It originally laid on the pedestal close to the beach, but someone kicked it over the edge. As a result, the statue is broke and the pedestal remains tilted. Interesting. As John acts like he's using a bazooka, I assume. Okay, now that is just beautiful. Very beautiful. Hmm. Anything down here though? Is it just pointless coming down here? Oh, there's a ship. Alright. Let us explore up here then. A goddess? A mother? Someone's wife? The choices, the choices, are many, but few are in between. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. That they did. That they did. Yeah? There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. Hmm. What does this tombstone say? Somehow the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. Investigating the ruins. 
An inscription near the foe pedestals translates to Vetus vests nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. Okay. Seems reasonable. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues. Oh, here we go. Okay, John, time to shine. I hope no one comes up here and just sees me sleeping on the job. Because that would not be good. Let's start with the top one. No. Hmm. Alright. Okay, so it's one of the ladies. Oh wait, so it can't be this one. This one has to be the... Alright. Now let me see... No. Vetus... And then Lemonus. Oh wait. The other one. What was his name? I don't know. That should be it, right? Maybe. Let's give it a try. It seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. All right. Well, that's not so bad. Took a little while, but nothing we couldn't handle. So let us. Investigating the ruins, Professor, da, 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 the scene we created, I should see if the location of the tomb becomes clear. Let's pin that. Okay, follow this path. Oh, there it is. Discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend. Technically, I found it, but just like with anything in life, the leader takes the credit. But I mean, he should have said, Thank you. Uh, we found it! Oh well. I understand how happy he is. But let us... Let's see. She is adapted to getting the truth even when people won't talk. A ninja could not have done better, though... May have looked cooler. Well, I'm not a ninja, but... Maybe we can. I don't know. She will discover its feelings and be fussed. Okay. Pound him so perhaps one day show you what discovered but he's angry at us with that book bazookaology thing. But let's read his journal. But first okay, so apparently both of them have identical darts, isn't that box of darts. Handy against rodents of all kinds. Isn't that wonderful? Well that's his diary. 
Tusks and Trunks. The zoological bestseller Tusks and Trunks provides a most rigorous scientific description of the elephant. It is almost encyclopedic in its analysis of the creature's life, both in the wild and captivity. One crucial chapter describes the elephant's mating season in which they become extremely dangerous. Furthermore, the book features guidance on how to communicate and interact with the big animal. Why does an archaeologist have this book if he's no longer friends with the elephant's caretaker? I don't know about you, but that just, it just seems very weird. Unless it was placed there to drive us off. Oh well. And now his diary. Remember, don't read another person's diary. Then again, who am I to say? For I am a detective. Leather Notebook, a personal diary owned by Arthur Swift. He describes in considerable detail his personal life and research. More importantly, it tells of a dispute between the archaeologist and Theodore Gilson over the dig site. Day 1000, okay, day 1224, he really was serious about keeping track of every day. Theodore always uses his wealth to shut down complaints. I had rather he brought a brain with more jurification so that he was smart enough to see the bigger picture. Not everything revolves around your darn elephant. I have only a few months before he will commence construction. He even lacks the imagination to build something beautiful. Every bass I mean, come on, there could have been better names. The mundanity. I must think, lest our invaluable history be buried by inconsequential. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Nothing. Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary, and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir! What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. Ah, yes. Last contact with Mr. Gildon. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. One of many, you say? Interesting. Where were you this morning? Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised? Shocked? I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. Let's provide some evidence. Alright, personal diary. Hmm. Let's ask him about his diary. You have a weakness for nostalgia? Or, rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. 
You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. Ah, uh, nice comeback, Sherlock. Why do you have a book on tusks? Uh, why do you have a book on tusks and trunks? With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant. Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion did you draw? That Theodore Gildon made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. Why do you own a box full of darts? What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. Interesting. Do you... No. Okay, why do you have a bazookaology book? As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I'd prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place. This caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own, Laura. Perhaps I envy, Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? Wonderful. Ah, uh, that feeling. Okay. That feeling of hating an entire book that has nothing to do with actual history or science. Okay, uh, what is at the thick side? No. Well, maybe he'll show something about his research. Moving on. Nope. Hmm. Does he know a Paul? Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gildon? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. Tell us more about this Ivory Baths plan. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gildon? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind. Nothing less and nothing more. Hmm. Okay. Maybe he has something to say about this boson knife. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Do I look like a person who carries a knife? You literally have a knife in your satchel or whatever. Uh. Alright. Hmm. Let's see what he has to say about this. Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. 
Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Well, he wouldn't know anything about this. Maybe this registration of Gilton and Swift? Moving on. Nope. Hmm. Maybe he has something to say about having a particular... How should I say this? Employment policy? What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. Okay. Investigating the ruins. Hmm. I doubt he would know anything about Paul. Suspicious notes. Hmm. Maybe he has something to say about Goliath. Gildan's elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. There's the title of the case cleverly used. Bonus points to the development team. Alright, well, now that we've collected all the evidence here, let's go to a mine palace. Okay. Everyone blames Goliath. Okay. Both Arthur and Paul own debt. Damage to the shed. Arthur has fresh bruises on his elbow. Arthur may have received his injury while falling on Gildan's shed. Arthur may have been at the scene of the crime. Paul may have been at the scene of the crime. I'm gonna put Paul because Paul has more reasons to be at the Gildan residence than Arthur does. I mean, Arthur could have come and tried to talk to Gildan, but it seems like he was at his dick site most of the time. Partnership ended. Mr. Swift and Mr. Gildan's business friendship was full of hardships and disagreement over the land. Arthur Swift has dedicated his life to studying the history of humankind. He may not have been willing to see it end. Anyone blames Goliath, fatal battering. It was mating season? No. Anyone blames Goliath. Person I've encountered blame every person I've encountered blames the elephant for the death of Gildan. No. 
I know. All right. We'll come back to that. All right. No, oh, wait, there's still a connection. Both Paul and Otha and Paulo and Dutz. It's mating season? No. Hmm. Oh, that was the one. I need to find Goliath. Goliath is dangerous right now, but may prove valuable to the case. I need to lure him out by exploiting his lust. And casebook. Okay, so we're going to extract it from that perfume of a failed experiment. Alright, I see what we need to do here. Find that to there. This goes here. No, that's not it. Unlink. There we go. I've extracted pheromones from the liquid. The elfin Goliath was present for Mr. Gildan's death and may hold answers. Sturdy gray fabric that can hold gas and instrument to mimic an elephant's shoveling a strong scent. Okay, so we already got the strong scent. We can get the fabric from here. This fabric will work. Alright, and now we need to go to the boat workshop. How much time do we have left in this? Alright. Actually, I think... I'll end the episode when we get back to the Sherlock's residence. And... We'll leave it there, and then in the next episode we'll hunt down uh, Goliath, because I refuse to lose to an elephant. Stonewood Manor. Alright. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and if you happen to like the commentary and content, then please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for future episodes in the future. And I hope everyone has a nice day, so see you next time. Soul Tales out. Yeah.